We all know behind every great man is a greater woman or great woman. Uh, that even includes the likes of Moses himself. Miriam, the sister of Moses and one of the seven female prophetesses in the Bible, uh, not only saved his life putting him in a basket in the Nile, but also led the Israelites in song as they crossed the Red Sea. Plus, Zipporah, Moses' wife, who herself was a Midianite, a great spiritual leader. Maya Margit is here with more to talk about these fantastic ladies. We got we to gotta do our props to we the women. We have to. We have to. Right? It's so, Passover. We have to remember some of the lesser heard of figures and Names, you know, especially these are very important people. Miriam, very important in the Old Testament, in the Bible. We first hear about her in the book of Exodus when she is basically taking Moses, her little brother, and saving him from Pharaoh's evil decree to kill all the firstborn of the Jews who were living in Egypt at the time. Puts him in the Sea of Reeds in a basket, and where he, as we know what happens, he's picked <laughs> up by. He ends up being a prince of Egypt. <laughs> what luck, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, some people are lucky. So she's the daughter of Amran and Yochaved, the brother, uh, the sister of Moses and Aaron. And she, and basically, she's one of the major, one of the seven major female prophetesses of Israel. What's interesting is her strong association with water. Her name is Miriam, which can be translated as bitter water. Mm -hmm. Yam is sea, also in Hebrew. Right. And there's several strong. And Mara is bitter, right? <laughs> exactly. And there's several strong like stories about her relationship with water. Uh, for instance, you know, when she saves Moses in the in by putting him in the Nile, you have the song of the sea, which she writes as they're crossing the Sea of Reeds. You have also the well of Miriam. Miriam, which was a well that followed the ancient Israelites through their pilgrimage through the right. desert. They're wandering through the desert. Uh, for 40 years, there was always a water, a well filled with water. It was a m miracle, and it was all thanks to Miriam. Right. It was her association with water that brought well, that Well, and water is like life force. I mean, water exactly. represents life force. But I mean, even the song of the sea, like everyone, like, I mean, like you see the depictions of her with the, exactly. with the tambourine. And you know, the, I'm looking at the lyrics. It's like, sing to the Lord for very exalted is he, a horse and its rider he cast into the sea. And like, apparently it was like, you know, singing, row, row, row your boat in rounds like the women would do it and then like right. the men would follow suit so she really was the one kind of and she was considered guiding a, everyone through the water she was guiding the women out of egypt it said in the in the torah that Moses, Aaron, and Miriam all guided the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. So she played a very important role. She wasn't just someone in the background yeah. standing behind Moses. She but, she, but, it, but the interesting thing is, is like she, you know, in spite of, I mean, this is a kind of archetypal for all of us, in spite of everything that she did, I mean, she ended up getting leprosy, which is said right. to be a disease caused by evil Slender. tongue because she didn't, she didn't approve of, uh, you know, of Sipora, his so wife. This, this episode in the Bible is actually very much disputed among Torah scholars. Uh, what happened is that uh, she, according to the literal text, she calls uh, the wife of Moses, Sipora, uh, the equivalent of the N-word, but in Hebrew, a very racist kind of term because Sipora was very dark-skinned, apparently. But other scholars have said that she wasn't actually insulting Zipporah, she was trying to defend her because what happened is that Moses and Zipporah apparently had uh, at some point a relationship where they were not sleeping together anymore, they were having marriage. sexual relations. They were typical marriage. And she was <laughs> trying to defend Zipporah and complaining to Moses about it, but she did receive leprosy. She got this divine punishment for speaking out against Moses from God and she was healed after Moses and Aaron both prayed for her to be healed. Right. Uh, another thing that's interesting about her is that first of all, she was seen as a prophetess from a very young age. She apparently convinced her parents to conceive of Moses. She said that you will, ha through you will be born a, ma a savior of Israel, and and so this it's kind of an interesting story that goes back to even when she was seen as, really, as a child. Really, and just so relevant, all of us. I mean, she never she never got married. She like her purpose was you know guiding the Israelites out of Egypt. But let's let's get to uh, Sipora now. Right. Also, you know, I think of her and I think of the Ten Commandments with the the woman who was in the Munsters playing Sipora. But I, I think Sipora is very much more of a like a subtle background figure. She's less well known than Miriam. Miriam was really seen as a strong leader. Zipporah was also seen as very decisive. You know, she helped uh, Moses at different times during his journey. She appears in the book of Exodus as the wife of Moses, the daughter of Reuel or Jethro. Jethro is a very important figure because he's seen as the forefather of the Druze, the spiritual father of the Druze. And they have their own very unique and special religion, which is very mysterious, actually. Yeah, no, it's interesting because you, yeah, it's true because like Yitro has a portion just from the, you know, the, the right. Zohar. I mean, there's a portion named after him, which is a big deal for someone who was not technically an Israelite exactly. but because he saw you know the miracles and everything he made the change to become you know a great 
you know, and, a great spiritual leader. It's so interesting. And, and Moses got to marry Zipporah. Well, we have to remind everyone of the story. Basically, Moses killed an Egyptian in Egypt uh, when he saw the Egyptian striking a brother of his, an Israelite. And then he had to flee so that Pharaoh wouldn't kill him. And Moses fled into the desert. Uh, he ran into basically these sh shepherdesses, these female shepherdess, shepherders. And, and what happened is that he saved them from some other people in the desert who were trying to steal their water and they're harassing them, basically. And then Jethro awarded him, uh, as in return, awarded him his daughter Zipporah, whom he married, and then they had two sons together, uh, Gershon and Eliezer. And this is the role she basically played. And she also had this very strange role in one of these really weird scenes. I don't know if you remember this. It's a very weird scene where basically God attacks Moses after he sees the burning bush. There's a small passage in the Bible that's mm -hmm. very obscure, very mystical, where God attacks Moses and she saves Moses, Zipporah does, by cutting the foreskin off of her child and throwing it on the ground. What Which does is this mean? I don't know. But you know, I know how from having sons, that's what right. they do after a breed. You bury, you bury it. So exactly. I wonder if that kind of, so interesting. And it's just so interesting. It explains the relationship between the Druze and the Israelites. Like right. it goes back to you know this time.